Welcome in to another edition of the KSO Show. Mason Voth, Derek Young here with you as we hit the middle of the week. The Wildcats are preparing for their road test with the Missouri Tigers. We got to see the first iteration of this game last season. It was a thumping by the Wildcats, 40-6 to with an asterisk in, Ma- in Manhattan. Missouri did technically end up with 13 points, uh, well, but it took well, yep. uh questionable penalty and uh, a few timeouts by Elia Drinkwitz to get the uh, Tigers – their, uh, their touchdown that they needed there at the end of the game. But this is a new Missouri team. It's a different K-State team. And we're also not expecting just a ton of wet weather. I think uh, sunshine in like mid-70s is the forecast right now for Columbia on Saturday. It'll be the first time K-State plays a game in Columbia since 2010. So uh, fun nonetheless to have these teams playing each other, even if it was just for this two-year stretch. We saw also former Big 12, Big 8 foes, Colorado and Nebraska have played a few times since. Missouri's getting ready to restart their series with Kansas uh, in a few years. So we've slowly but surely gotten back to seeing these uh, former foes play each other. It's been a lot of fun. I'd be down for more of it. Obviously, we're going to get to see K-State and Colorado much sooner than we would have ever anticipated. Um, But it is the Tigers on the schedule. And we'll just start there real quick before we dive into anything that Chris Kleiman said, D.Y., um, what what do you make of this Missouri team heading into this weekend? Obviously, you were smart. You liked Middle Tennessee State to cover uh, last week because you knew Missouri might be looking ahead. But did Missouri play even worse in that game than you thought? Like, is Missouri not as good as maybe some might think? Even Chris Kleiman, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. No, I, I well, it depends on which angle you take. I think the talent there is obvious, right? I I think they got dudes as Jerome Tang would say. They got some dudes, and if you you kind of put them in that a position to really achieve and, and to have success and really line them up, uh, they can do some damage. The problem is probably the coaching, right? I don't I don't know if that's as, as good as the talent. So I, I'm, I'm not sure that they're worse or, or better than what I thought. I figured that they would overlook Middle Tennessee, and I think that much – was confirmed and, and actually I, I kind of go back to you kind of rolled the highlights there and I wanted I did want to say this every time you rolled those at the beginning one I was like man is Avery Johnson going to score a touchdown this week because that that always crosses my mind and two I hear Mitch Fortner just like bellowing over the microphone there right are we are we going to have to start paying him some royalties uh for our intro uh and the fact that he has not even requested that yet makes me believe makes me think that he probably is not listening to our show. So I'm a little disappointed in that as well, because he would be the first to probably claim those royalties or bring it up even before I would. But yeah, back to Missouri, a dangerous team. If you 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 know what, if you start to make them believe, that's when they become more dangerous too. Like they're psyched up for this game, but if you jump on them early, then it's like you know. I was going to cuss there. We probably can't on our show. But it's like, oh, crap, you know, here we go again, right? That I, I think there's a – the first quarter could probably tell us a lot. One, if Kansas State jumps all over Missouri, it's here we go again. But also, two, like you force Missouri into, yeah, we got to pass every time, and you know it. And with Brady Cook at the helm, I don't know if that's a good thing. Yeah, it's 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 a weird deal because Missouri's probably best offensive weapon n- requires you to throw the football, right. but I'm not sure you want Brady Cook throwing the football. You know, like that's kind of the the questionable thing. I mean, we saw last year. I know it wasn't all on him, but three straight drives in the second half, Missouri threw interceptions, um, and that right there just was like the cherry on top of the the butt whooping that K State handed out. Um, and Chris Kleiman made it clear today that, hey, like, we know Luther Burden is a guy that we have to stop because he can be special. And we talked about it. Um, I can't remember if it was you and I or if it was me with Fan and Drew on Sunday. But looking at what Luther Burden did, remember, it was kind of like a, a storyline last year during that game in Manhattan. They were not getting the ball to him like they should have. And they really didn't all of last season until the very end. In the last three games, so the first two of this season and then going back to their bowl game with Wake Forest, they have gotten Luther Burden the ball at least seven receptions 
in those games. But before that, the most catches he had in the game was six, and it happened against like their FCS opponent and then just some random middle of the season SEC game. Like they have clearly made it an emphasis to get the ball in his hands more. So they know how to use him and, and to get him involved. And K State is worried about what he can do. And they should. He's he's a stud. I mean, we could, you know, discuss Missouri as much as we want, and, and we could probably, you know, pick them apart and say, you know, this part's overrated, that part's overrated. I'm not sure there's a Big 12 team that wouldn't want Luther Burden on their roster. That guy's certified yeah. dude, right? Certified stud. So, and, and, and we'll see. First real test, like, in the, you know, Jacob Parrish, Will Lee, like, welcome to college football. Here's Luther Burden. Can you do it? it it's, uh, yeah. I don't, I don't want to say put up or shut up because those two have played well, but like, this is a different kind of task. Yeah. Well, uh, Chris Kleiman, he talked about some things today. Um, it, well, you know, I, I thought it was pretty ho hum. There wasn't a ton to it that was maybe earth shattering or, or major news, but certainly some things to take away from it to kind of get an idea of where the the Wildcats might have their heads at uh, right now. Uh, if you had to pick one thing that you thought was the the most interesting or the most important that Chris Kleiman said today, uh, what would you put that as? I'll be honest, there wasn't. And you're probably listening to this the next day. So it, it, the yesterday was probably the press yeah. conference, assuming that you are uh, listening to this on Wednesday. There, It was pretty dry, let's be honest. <laughs> there, there wasn't a whole lot of juice to this press conference. Not that there has to be. That's not a criticism. Typically when they're dry, it means things are going well. Things are going well. Mm -hmm. You're running out of ammunition uh, to cover. You're running out of space to fulfill. You're running out of things to ask. I mean, I'm, I asked about Tobios and zombie. I think, you know, how many snaps did he have? 10? Like I'm asking a guy, yeah. I'm asking, asking about a guy that's a, a pretty much a role player, but obviously can, can build and, and grow into a, a much more significant player. If not this year than the next, but yeah, there's just a whole lot going on. So it's injuries probably Christian Duffy practiced yeah. again on Monday, maybe going to play that can shore up a lot at right tackle. That that's not just hey, we might be a little bit better at right tackle now. But it's also hey, we're going to be a lot better at left guard too because we're going to keep our all American there. So that kind of goes two ways. Yeah. And and Chris Kleiman seems to be optimistic that they can really cut uh, Keegan Johnson loose as well. And I think that's pretty significant because at least at least Troy, their coaching staff, did not. And maybe they were wrong on this because Jane Jackson did hurt them. Phil Brooks did hurt them when given the opportunity. But they were like, we're not worried about any of these wide receivers. We're just going to take away Ben Sennett. Mm -hmm. so. And, I mean, in some respects, like you would look at it and you would say that's probably the right thing to do. But I think good in terms of K-State in general, but also then for these guys stepping up, we did see that, they, when given the opportunity, they can make some of these plays. I mean, Jaden Jackson has been impressive the first two weeks, given you know the circumstance, re, re, you know, kind of revolving around the receivers, and more than his his touchdown grab that he had in the second game against Troy. It was the one that was kind of over the top through traffic downfield that he caught, um, you know, around like the twenty yard line or whatever that I was most impressed by him coming down with. That's been important for them. And then um, it's just good to have those guys developing because the, the staff does believe that Keegan Johnson can be a really, really good player uh, and a true number one receiver for them. And that's important for Will Howard to have. And so um, it, if you have a great receiver, which they think Keegan Johnson can be, and you have what we know is a great tight end and Ben Sennett, and then all these other ancillary pieces that are kind of picking it up as well, that makes it really tough to stop. That gives Missouri a lot to kind of deal with. Um, real quick, though, you meant, you mentioned the Christian Duffy injury. Here's what Chris Kleiman had to say on that. Uh, it, I would probably caution that maybe Thursday we would know. He did practice yesterday, uh, which was a, a great sight to see. Um, today and tomorrow will be the kind of the telling days when we go a little bit faster and go a little bit harder and – uh, with our pads on, he's going to get some work, and then we'll have to evaluate and see where he's at on Thursday. 
So there you have it. That's what Chris Kleiman said. Do do you think Christian Duffy is playing on Saturday or at least going to give it a go, regardless of Chris, you know, Chris Kleiman kind of making it seem like, hey, we'll we'll have to learn later in the week. A pitch count at best, if we're going to pay attention and kind of follow the same playbook as Uso Sayamalo, as Keegan Johnson, right? The first mm-hmm. time they kind of dibbled, dibbled, dabbled with those two was uh, a sparingly amount of snaps. For Uso, it was 11. For Keegan, was 16. No, Uso, he never had a game where he wasn't in uniform. Keegan was not in uniform. We're right back to 16 snaps next week. Hopefully, Christian Duffy can provide something of that nature. John Pastore uh, was a different kind of playbook, but a similar one, where didn't wasn't in uniform week one. In uniform week two, didn't play. Is they're ramping him up. Can he be ready week three? So, yeah, we'll see. Uh, some of the stuff is, it just, you know, every player is not the same. Like, one, everyone recovers at a different rate, just like everyone develops at a different rate. And two, and this isn't to call anyone soft, and that's not my intention, but pain tolerance is different for everybody. Like, mm-hmm. if I have a bruised knee and you have a bruised knee, maybe I'm going to miss some time, but you're not, right? It, I mean, it's different, right? I mean, it's different. So we can look at those playbooks by Usa Sayamalo, by, by Keegan Johnson, and think, hey, this is probably how it's going to go for Christian Duffy, but it might not. So we'll see. Um, gun in my head, I think we see a limited Christian Duffy. I. I lean towards we see him at least in some way because Chris Kleiman obviously seems to know that there is importance in getting this offensive line fixed because he was asked about the run game today and how there have been some lulls. It hasn't necessarily worked the way that they would obviously have wanted it to. And I thought he was pretty transparent about pinning it kind of on the offensive line. Here's what Chris Kleiman said about having to block better to get the run game started. Uh, it's sustaining blocks, I would say. I deem the right people in the in the in the scheme, and then sustaining blocks. Um, and uh, if you flipped it and and said they did a tremendous job of of changing targets by slanting and angling, and then they got off blocks and did a really good job. And so, um, you know, we can say we've got to sustain blocks better and communicate better. Um, and, and that's something that we've got to focus on because there there was not as many creases as we'd like. All right, D.Y., what do you make of Chris Kleiman's transparency in terms of uh, making it just pretty matter-of-fact on why K-State has struggled to accomplish it entirely what they wanted in the run game? Just a little bit of tough love here. Like, we can do better, basically, I think. It's like, guys, I'm, I'm not here. I'm not going to yell at you. I'm not going to scream at you. Most of you dudes, three of you dudes, I think, I've been here for six years. Uh, let's get to work and do what we're capable of doing. Like we might have sleepwalked here a little bit. Maybe that's not the right term either. But we're underachieving what I think our standard is. So um, he's not dilly dallying, kind of avoiding the question anymore. Kind of going head on. It's like, hey, let's address this. This is an issue now. It wasn't just a one off. Now we're, we're at two games. Now we're playing an SEC opponent where we can't get away with it. It's time to get there. Speaking of the SEC opponent, Missouri is the the team on the schedule this week, and they happen to be pretty good as defense as a whole, but also against the run. Uh, This season, they're yet to allow a team to reach 100 yards rushing, similar to K-State. And in addition to that, you go and look at what they did last year. They were the fourth best rush defense in the SEC. The only teams better than them were three teams that finished ranked in the top 10, Georgia, Alabama, and Tennessee. And then Missouri looks like a fish out of water tossed in with those teams in the top half of uh, the rankings. And their defense last year was very good. Um, only gave up around, you know, not they, they were pretty stingy at times on the ground. Chris Kleiman, he praised the defense as a whole uh, for the Tigers this week. Really good. They're they're very physical. Um, they, you know, we're talking about sustaining blocks. They don't stay blocked. They do a great job of block destruction. And then they're, you know, they're really fast and they play really good man coverage. They break on the ball well in zone. Um, 
you know, I, once again, there's a lot of guys that have played a lot of football on that side of the ball uh, for them uh, on defense. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a big challenge for us. We have to find way. We have to be able to rush the football. You can't say you're going to go in there and throw it 50 times now. Um, you know, can we find ways to rush the football? That's, you know, it's, it's what is it, Tuesday afternoon, and we're still uh, seeing how we can do those things. Really seems like Chris Kleiman might be worried about this rushing the football thing. Not ju- you know, not just against Missouri, but in general. But this week, it, it is important because you're playing a team that is very good against the run. Um, I mean, how worried should K-State and K-State fans be about bringing this lacking rushing attack to Columbia on Saturday to face Missouri? I don't know that it's so much a worry but it's a point of emphasis this week because it's like we were because I believe in his heart of hearts is like, we're going to run the damn ball this year. Like, <laughs> I don't know when it's going to happen, but we're going to be a good damn running team because we have mm-hmm. everybody back. We have an offensive line back. We have DJ freaking Giddens. We have Trayshawn freaking Ward. Like we have a good passing game, but like, like there is no like super duper flaw in the ointment of our offense. We're going to run the freaking ball at some point, and we need it to be this week. So I don't know if it, he's like panicked, concerned, worried. You know, I don't see it's like that. It's like we're going to run the freaking ball at some point this year. Why not this week? And and we're going to need to. But and I did. I think in the back of his mind, he also knows it's like Missouri might be the best run defense we face this year. Like I know people don't want to hear yeah, that because sure. they're like all these big 12 teams can do it too. It's like, look, I know Missouri is not your, like I'm, I'm super freaking scared of this sec team. Like Missouri kind of in the, in my mind, it's just like when Kansas state played Mississippi state, except the first year when they got mm-hmm. smoked, of course, but, uh, but like, yeah, it's, it's di- a, di- you know, different regime. That was a Snyder team there. So I, you know, different, different scale. Yeah. And lost to Vanderbilt. So maybe I don't want to go there. Uh, uh, but hey, that was, Texas that, that Bull, baby. Texas Bull. <laughs> yep. Knocked off. Yeah. We I mean, hey, guy. Chris Kleiman is Chris Kleiman's what? Uh, he's he's got a couple wins against the SEC under his belt. Obviously, the last game against an SEC opponent did not go great, but he's he's got those wins. Uh, yeah, what he's got: LSU, Mississippi State, Missouri. Is it three? Yeah, I is guess those two? are the only two. So he's two. Oh yeah, three. He's three and one. He's three and one against three, the one, SEC. Three, oh, the, yeah, yeah. Now, as much as we I was were already say, not hey, counting Missouri from last year, so I was going to say, can we not count Alabama? But if we didn't count Alabama, then I was like, then we probably shouldn't count LSU because I think LSU yeah. like they might have twenty nine players in Houston for that game. Um, anyway, yeah. uh, off on a tangent here, I think. The only way that Missouri is reflective of an SEC team is their defense. Well, and, you know, Chris Kleiman, he, I think that was apparent today with what he said. And K-State does have to be ready for this Missouri team, just in terms of, like, just like a lot of teams, if you mess around, they can they can jump up and get you. And it would be one of those deals where if you spotted Missouri uh, in early lead – like their defense could make it tough on you to make it back into the game and you could find yourself running out of time at the end. Like that is a legit possibility. Like, you know what we're describing Missouri? Like, like if I didn't know better, like Kirk Ferentz coaches, this team, (laughs) like that's what we're, you know, Kirk Ferentz, (laughs) Matt Campbell. Like I I think, I think Eli Drinkwitz might belong in a Cyhawk game. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I, what, with what I'm saying, like the best way that I would describe that is you look at last year, um, the the Missouri Georgia game. Like that was a Missouri team; they weren't great, and Georgia was obviously the best team in the country. But Georgia spotted Missouri a ten point lead at halftime, and it took Georgia outscoring Mizzou fourteen to three in the fourth quarter to come back into that game and give themselves the the win. Like, Missouri made it stingy on them. Georgia did not take that lead, uh, did not take the lead for the first time in that game and then permanently until the four-minute mark of the fourth quarter. And K-State, you don't want to be in that position where you're needing to, you know, four minutes left or less, go and get that score to give yourself the lead. 
lead. So I, I do think that it's a possibility that, that K-State gets tested a little bit here. I, K-State is the better team. Like, there's no doubt about that in my mind. Um, but they're, they have reason to be concerned. And I almost think that it's kind of the opposite of last week. You know, Chris Kleiman tried to downplay the whole group of five loss thing and everything that went into that. I think this week he has to take a totally different approach and kind of flip it around and try and convince the guys that, hey, that win last year, 40 to 13, that's not, that's not easy. That Missouri team, they were not that bad. We were not that good on that day. And this is going to be a totally different deal when we see them this Saturday. And I think Chris Kleiman has to maybe overhype Missouri a little bit to get these guys' attention. Um, not too much because, like, uh, these guys are self-motivated and they're not just, you know, they don't need Chris Kleiman and Ben Newman telling them how good somebody is and how it's, you've got to do this and this. These guys knows, know what they have to do. But I do think that sometimes it's good to have that reminder and at least to put it in your head, hey, still got to take these guys seriously because just as bad as these players wanted to, you know, not lose to a group of five school this year, they just as easily could go in and, and downplay and say, we beat this team 40 to 13 last year. Like we're going to be fine. It's no big deal. And so I do think there's an element to that of what Chris Kleiman is doing, despite the fact that I do think the praise for the defense and Luther burden has been genuine. It's just a lot more than what um, I think we would normally expect in terms of genuine props that are being given to this team. Yeah. I think that's exactly what he is doing. And you brought up that Georgia game. That is probably the formula for Missouri in this one, right? They want this to be a low-scoring game. A lot of the stuff that we're saying would have been perfect for a pregame pod, too. So you might just hear the same freaking show mm-hmm. on Friday morning, folks. Like, yeah. <laughs> there's, a, there's a great chance yeah. of that. The, the funny thing, and I brought up, like, like we're talking like Eli Drinkwitz is like Matt Campbell or Kirk Ferentz. Like, he kind of is. Like, I, I, I know I sent in our group chat that we're in, like this stat, and it's pretty phenomenal. Like mm-hmm. in the last 18 games under Eli Drinkwitz, Missouri's only scored more than 24 points, and 24 is not a lot of points in this era of college college football. Like 24 is like the baseline, right? Um, mm-hmm. Remember Brian Ferentz's contract in Iowa, the offensive coordinator in Iowa. He gets to keep his job yep. if he averages 25. So that tells you what 24 is. Missouri is only yeah, no, scored – Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, you're absolutely right. Like M- Missouri, that you're you're spot on here. I mean, think last week if Middle Tennessee scores 24 points, they score five more points, they win that game. They, they Missouri won it 23 to 19. So you're absolutely right. Yeah, the last 18 games, 18. That's more than a season. It's like a season and a half. It is a season and a half. Freaking math there. Uh, Eli Drinkwitz in those 18 games, they have scored more than 24 points five times. That's it. Now, not only is that embarrassing, I'll take it a step further. Of those five times that they've scored more than 24 points, those five times, only one against the Power 5 opponent. Only one. So Arkansas last year. Arkansas last year. The other four were against South Dakota, New Mexico State, Abilene Christian and Louisiana Tech. Now, something mm-hmm. tells me that Kansas State is probably not going to be added to that list with the way that they are playing defense right now. The only thing that makes me throw caution into the wind is two things. One, Missouri's at home. That place is going to be on freaking fire, even though it's an 11 a.m. kickoff. And two, they've been they've been waiting a year for this game. They really have. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's that's the thing. I mean, it, it, they they survived last week, and now they've made it unbeaten to their big their big game. And honestly, like, look, Missouri, they play in the the SEC East geography, not their friend. So they have major games this year with Georgia and Tennessee. They'll play Tennessee at home. Uh, they'll also play LSU this season, but they probably don't view those games as as winnable and as, you know, rah rah as this game with K-State. And so that will be important. One final thing, just to, you know, put the bow on it and, and kind of paint the picture even uh, brighter for everybody. You talked about, like, what they've scored. They've only scored 24 points uh, in a win against SEC competition once under Eli Drinkwitz. That was the 29-27 win over Arkansas last year. 
if you flip it around and look, and this shows just how stingy their defense can be, they really didn't get beat bad by anybody last year. I mean, they lost to some bad teams in the SEC, and they beat some bad teams. But if you look through their their wins and losses last year at Auburn, who was not a good team last year, they fired their coach, 17-14 to 14 overtime loss. Georgia, number one team in college football, unstoppable force. They lost 26 to 22. At Florida, not the you know most dangerous of teams last year. They lost 24 to 17. Vanderbilt, they flat suck. They only won 17 to 14. South Carolina, they beat them 23 to 10. A bad Kentucky team last year. They lost 21 to 17. The only SEC game they played last year where they got blown out was by Tennessee, who had probably the best offense in the SEC until Hendon Hooker got hurt. No, that's exactly right. That's that's what you get when you play Missouri, right? That's what you get. Now, Kansas State, that's the way you lose, right? You you play a game in the teens. Mm -hmm. That's the Missouri formula. Like, like this sounds so antithetical to Kansas State because of everything that we know, even in the beginning years of Chris Kleiman. And throughout the all, the entire tenure of Bill Snyder, for the most part, but Kansas State needs a track meet, really, because they'll win that. Like, yeah, let's get this game fast. Yeah, Missouri, Missouri probably can't keep up. Yeah, and not to be lost in all this, I'll, I'll finish it off by saying this: K State's defense has been equally as impressive as Missouri's this year, and you know there are some areas of weakness with it. Chris Kleiman mentioned safeties today. He was asked about it. Uh, kind of talked about how you know. B.J. Payne is adjusting to a position switch. Kobe Savage is working back from, you know, an injury. And there's maybe some slight concern there. But everybody else on this defense has been really impressive. And the one thing that we've learned under Joe Klanderman's defenses is as long as he's able to get pressure from his guys up front, it creates mistakes deeper in the defense. So if you put pressure on Brady Cook with Khalid Duke, Brendan Mott, Austin Moore, Whoever you throw up there, um, the nose guard should be mentioned as well because they've been good this year at getting good push up the middle. Mistakes can be made to where even the inexperienced or struggling guys in the back half of K-State's defense can make Missouri pay. So K-State's defense should not be lost in this shuffle either. If And I only say that because I don't want anybody walking out of this 30-minute show today and like freaking out and being scared of facing Missouri. You should not be scared of it. You should just be acutely aware that the Tigers might be a little better in some areas than you thought. And don't be alarmed if it's the third quarter and they're they're pushing K-State a little bit. Fast start, be aggressive, third down, fourth down, because th- there's a certain threshold of points you could score on Missouri and the game's completely over. Yeah, it's, it's a good point. All right, uh, I'll, I'll finish off with one question for you, D.Y. You talked about scoring fast and early. If K-State wins the toss on Saturday, should Chris Kleiman take the ball and go score? No, I don't like to do that on the road. Okay. They did it at Oklahoma last year. Yeah, I, and it wouldn't surprise me if he does it. I don't know how you feel. Like, I'm okay with doing that at home, but doing it on the road, like, what, what if – you know, you just give them the momentum in front of their home yeah. crowd right away. That's what that's my thing. No, I, I think you're right. I think in a lot of circumstances it's probably better, especially on the road, because whether it's this way or not, and you know, this is a totally unscientific thought process, but it seems in a lot of areas, figuratively and literally, teams punt on their first possession of the game. Like they go out there sure. and I know, you know. <laughs> We, everybody talks about you know the, the script and everything that coaches have set up, but for some reason, like offensive coaches and, and just the way things work out, like they come out, they're going to run on first down, second down, maybe it's a run or a short pass, and then third down, they're behind the sticks a little bit. They got to throw, ball falls incomplete, immediate three and out, you're punting it. And then it's like the other teams that getting the actual first possession of the game, plus they're going to get the first possession of the second half. So I'm okay either way, honestly. Um, For this game this weekend, K-State's defense is good enough to hold the Missouri offense at bay that it probably makes sense that if you win the toss, just play it standard, defer to the second half, go out there, let your defense get after it, You know, put have Khalid Duke reel in some fish, put Brady Cook in the ground, and then move on with your life and get the offense out there second. 
maybe you punt on the first drive if your team doesn't have Jaden Jackson. Good call. Yes, the touchdown maker. Uh, Jaden Jackson, first first player to score a touchdown, whatever that number is this week on uh, your your betting app of choice. Um, you just It's a trend you, you might want to watch out for. Uh, it's, he's done it twice to start the season. We would have to see if he can do it a third time. Is he on the field, though, if Keegan Johnson starts? That's the other question. <laughs> Uh, I think if you're Chris Kleiman, you have to put him out there. I mean, put Keegan Johnson out there, but Jaden Jackson has to be out there. It's bad mojo if you're not putting him on the field. You're basically waving the white flag saying, I don't want a touchdown on this drive. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I, it's, yeah. They play the same Jane position. Jackson's the key to the offense. Yeah. Who's play- yeah, we'll see. Okay. All right. Well, that will do it for D.Y. and I. We will be back. Mm-hmm on Friday for the pregame pod, previewing this game a little bit more in depth. Although really it seems like it's going to be a simple game on both sides for K-State just outpace the Tigers. And for Missouri, it's about making sure K-State doesn't outpace you and using that really good defense. Outscore. Yep. There we go. All right. That is Derek Young. I am Mason Voth. Back on Friday, like I said, make sure that you are joined up and following along with everything over on K-State Online, part of the On3 Network. And if you like what you're hearing or seeing here, make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel as well as the Spotify and Apple links. That way you know the instant that a new pod or piece of content is up. The best thing for you may not even be us. It's the fact that immediately after the game is over, you can get Chris Kleiman's full words ready to go. The press conference right there for you. Same type of deal on Tuesdays when Chris Kleiman speaks. That way you can be just as in the know as everybody else uh, to know what the the head coach said uh, on Tuesdays. And if you don't like what you're hearing, do all that anyways. (laughs) Exactly. Because the best thing about sports is, even better than agreeing with people that you listen to is disagreeing with people that you listen to. So leave some nasty comments down below uh, on the YouTube. If you feel like it, we'll be, we'll be back on Friday and uh, ready to go for the cats and the tigers from Columbus.